Okay, welcome everyone. This lecture is a continuation of our previous lecture on project budgeting and project cost management. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to look at uh, two different concepts. One is the idea of the time value of money, and the second is the concept of the earned value management techniques. Uh, the time value of uh, money concept is something that is familiar to you if you have taken finance classes. Uh, so we'll briefly go over those and see how we can use the time value of money idea as far as the budgeting of the project is concerned. Um, and primarily this is something that we use um, when selecting projects. So project selection is the major concern uh, for the time value of money and uh, the use of that, right? Uh, so in the time value of money, we've got certain uh, concepts. So let's become familiar with these uh, terms first. The first idea is the present value of money. This is the value of money right now. So if you have a uh, $1,000 in your pocket at the moment, the present value of that money is $1,000, right? Now this money, if you were to invest it in some sort of a secure financial instrument or you were to put it in a bank, it will accrue certain interest. So that amount of money, uh, one year into the future or X number of years into the future, will hopefully have a value greater than its present value. And that is what we call as the future value. And the net present value is basically taking future sums of money and then discounting them and coming up with uh, the summation of their present values together. And that idea is called the net present value. So naturally, if we have a future value and we want to find out its present value, we have to deduct from it all the interest rates that will be accrued over the years. So that idea of converting a future value into a present value is the idea of discounting, where we are taking out the interest rate that will be earned. However, taking a present value and then determining how much that money is going to be worth in the future is adding to it uh, the different interest rates that will be accrued across the years. So that is uh, the idea of compounding, right? So if you take a future value and you determine its present value, normally it reduces because uh, there is discounting taking place. And if you take a present value and you determine its future value, normally it increases because you're adding to it different interest rates uh, and that money is increasing in its value. Therefore, it is called compound. So when we uh, find, the present value of a future value that is discounting. And if we find the future value of a present value, then that is called compounding. So here we have an example uh, where we have a project in front of us and we have to select uh, and decide whether this will be a viable project and whether we should be pursuing it or not. So example one, right? for example, if a project requires an expenditure of $100,000 right now, so that means that the $100,000 is the present value and this is an amount of money that is going to go out of your pocket. And let's assume further that this project will yield to us or it will give back to us $200,000 in six years. Now the question is, how should the project manager evaluate this option and uh, whether this is a viable option for the project to uh, be pursued or not, right? So, the question is, should we go after this project or not, right? So how do we determine that? Well, in order to do this, we need to uh, have uh, certain interest rates or discounting rates provided to us. So let's assume in this case that the discounting rate is 10%. So we have a formula. Uh, so we'll get to that formula shortly. So let's understand this again. We are going to spend 100,000 now, and we're going to get back $200,000 in six years, right? So what we're trying to do is that we're going to take this $200,000 and take away from it the six years of interest rate and find out how much money uh, is this money in today's terms, right? So we're trying to find the present value of this. So we're going to be discounting this by six time periods, right? So the formula is that the present value is equal to the future value divided by one plus the interest rate raised to the power n, which is the number of time periods. So the present value is 
uh, equal to $200,000, which is the future value, divided by one plus uh, the 10 divided by 100 gives us a 0.1. So we get a one plus 0.1 raised to the power six, which is the years, right? So six signifies the six time periods in which this compounding was taking place. So we're going to be doing the opposite of it. We're doing the discounting. So this is 200,000 divided by 1.1 raised to the power six. And if we do this, we get $112,800 um, as the figure for the refund, right? So the future value of $200,000 right now is worth $112,800. Now the present value of the cost of doing this is 100,000, right? So this is 100,000 cash outlay that's going out of our pocket. So what is the net present value then? So the net present value of this project is the present value, which is 112,800, minus the present value of the cost of doing this project, which is 100,000 right now. So 112,800 minus the $100,000 equals to $12,800, right? Which is a positive figure. So basically we're going to uh, immediately spend 100,000 this is what we're saying. And immediately we're going to get back 12,800. So that 100,000 being spent is worthwhile because it gives us back a positive figure. And that figure signifies that this is a lucrative project and is going to earn us uh, right now 12,800. So we are going to be better off by investing in this project and we're going to do really well, right? Now, had we a uh, second option available to us as well, so in that case, we could then evaluate that second option, and then we can compare the NPVs of option A, which is this one, and option B, whatever figure that comes up, and the one that comes out as the bigger number, that's the, the project that we would pursue because it will have a greater NPV, right? So the rule being that we normally go for projects which have a higher net present. Now, projects are not that simple. Uh, certain times we've got this idea of cash flows uh, within projects as well, where we're not getting money back at one particular instance in time, rather we're getting or we're spending money over different periods or different uh, time periods, right? So let's have a look at a second example. So example two is that you've been asked to evaluate the following proposal and the information is given. Yeah, right. Apply the technique of the discounted cash flows to the information shown below and determine whether or not this project is worth pursuing. And let's assume that the discount rate is 12%. So let's first understand the information that's given to us provided uh, here, right? So we've got a startup cost of $50,000 right now. So $50,000 is going out of our pocket. Then in year one, year two, and year three, we've got no further cost uh, of the startup because it's the cost that will be incurred at the beginning of the project. So 50,000 is going out. The running cost of this project, it could include things like rent and staffing and material, et cetera, has also been assumed. So let's assume that we're going to spend $30,000 in the first year, $45,000 in the second year, and then $45,000 in year three. So these are running costs. So you have to be clear that this is money that is going out of your pocket as opposed to money coming into your pocket. Let's assume further that this project is going to earn us certain revenues as well. So at the start of the project, we get nothing uh, because we're spending and it's a startup cost of 50,000. We're not getting any revenue. But in year one, we're going to get back, let's uh, say $40,000. In year two, we're going to get back $50,000. In year three, we're going to get back $60,000, right? So these 30, 45, and 45 are monies that are going out of our pocket. And these are monies that are coming into our pocket. And lastly, let's assume that the, at the end of uh, the third year, we're going to sell off this project um, and we will be able to sell it off at $70,000. So again, this is money that is coming into our pocket, right? So these, these two columns are money that are coming into our pocket, and these two columns are, or sorry, rows are money that is going out of pocket. 
So now the question is, should we be going for this project or not, right? How much is this project worth right now? So let's figure this out, right? So we have to calculate the net present value of the project. And the net present value is the money that we are going to spend or uh, gain in year one, plus the money that we're going to spend or gain in year two, the present value of that, and the net present value of the third year and so forth. So once we add all of these up together, we get a uh, final figure, which is the net present value of the project, and then we can see what is going on. So the 50,000 that we're spending right now is going out of our pocket at this exact moment. So there's no need to do any discounting here. In year one, we're spending 30,000, but we're getting back 40,000. So we have to take this year one figure, uh, the 30 and the 40,000, and we have to discount them backward by one time. Right? Then we're going to take the year two figures, which are the 45,000 going out of our pocket and 50,000 coming into our pocket. And we're going to discount them not one time, but two times, so that we get its present value. And then we're going to take the year three figures in which the 45,000 is going out of our pocket, but the 60 and 70,000 are coming into our pocket. And we're going to discount that by three time periods and bring it back here. Right? So the 50,000 is going out of our pocket right now plus the 30,000 is going out of our pocket plus the 40,000 is coming into our pocket. So that's why the 30,000 is a negative and the 40,000 is a positive figure divided by one plus the interest rate, so 12% and we remove the percentage sign so we get a 0.12 raised to the power one because we're discounting it by one time plus the 45,000 is going out of our pocket, the 50,000 is coming into our pocket, so the 45 is a negative, the 50 is a positive, divided by one plus 0.2, which is again 0.12, which is uh, the uh, discounting rate, raised to the power two, because we are discounting it by two time periods. And then in year three, the 45,000 is going out of our pocket, that's why it's a negative, the 60 and the 70,000 are coming into our pocket, that's why they're positive, divided by one plus 0.12 raised to the power three, because we have to discount it by three times. So this 50,000 remains as 50,000. This little figure here, um, it evaluates to 8,928. This figure here evaluates to 3,986. And this little uh, figure here, evaluates to 60,501. And if we uh, do the arithmetic here, we get 23,415 as the net present value. So again, what's going on? You know, how do we interpret? So the 23,415 is greater than zero. So it's a positive figure. That means that this is a lucrative project and that we should pursue it and we're going to be better. Right? So this is how we evaluate a, uh, the second function. Right? Now we can move from uh, this idea of time value uh, of money uh, to this uh, additional concern of something called the earned value management technique. Right? The earned value management technique is a powerful tool. It's not only a uh, evaluation tool, but it's also a communication tool as well. So we'll see how we can apply the idea of the earned value management to a particular object, right? So let's suppose, let me turn my phone off. Let's suppose I've got uh, a project and it has 10 activities. So it has an activity one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So there are 10 activities that have to be done. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume that each of these activities is going to take one week to perform. So activity one will take a week and two will take a week and so forth. So the to total time period required to conduct this project is 10. The budget is that we plan that activity one will consume $5,000, activity two will consume 8,000, 7,000 for the third activity and 12,000 and so on and so forth. And if we add all these figures up, uh, they add up to 100,000. So the project is 10 weeks in length, it comprises of 10 activities and uh, 
the total budget for this project uh, that we have planned is 800 dollars now let's do something interesting here let's assume that at the end of week five right here right at the end of week five we check to see what has happened right so the entire project hasn't finished we have decided to check somewhere and around the middle marker of this project to see what has gone on right so what we find is that we check at the end of week five um, and we find that only activities one through four have been completed right so here uh, something interesting is taking place we are checking at the end of week five so technically five of these activities should have been completed and the cost of the five activities, that is 5,000 plus 8,000 plus 7,000 plus 12,000 plus 14,000, that is how much it, would have, it should have costed us. Rather, uh, it's not a perspective of what should have happened. Uh, what we're trying to see is what has really happened, right? So what we find here is that only activities one to four have been completed. That is to say that this fifth activity hasn't been completed as yet, even though it's the end of five weeks. So that means that one less activity has been performed. We're, we're going a bit slow or we're going slow on this project, right? And we find further that we have spent so far $36,000, right? Now, where, did, where do I get this figure from? So I'm just assuming this, right? So I am, I'm assuming that when I complete one through four and I check my finances, I find that I've only spent $36,000, right? So this is on an assumption. So well, how much should I have actually spent? So as I said, my plan was that by the end of week five, all of these five activities should have been completed. And how much should I have spent by then? I should have spent the cost of these five activities, the 5,000 plus the 8,000 plus the 7,000 plus the 12,000 plus the 14,000. So I should have spent $46,000 by the end of week five, where I have only spent $36,000, right? So therefore, I have spent 36,000, whereas I should have spent 46,000. So 46,000, Minus the 36,000 tells me that I am 10,000 behind budget. I should have spent 10,000 more. So this is clearly giving me an indication that my spending rate is not uh, as, as per the plan. And also this is giving me an indication that by the end of week five, uh, I should have done five activities, but I've actually done four. So I'm not really performing up to par either. Uh, I'm sort of behind uh, the time period. I'm, I'm slow as far as the work is concerned, and I'm spending slow as well, right? So there, there's this concern, right? So as a project manager now, we need to figure out what is going on. So this. So this what we use is something called the earned value management technique. And this is a technique that was um, created by NASA to manage its own projects. And it's something that's been in existence since the 1960s or 70s, right? So before we jump into um, this earned value management technique, let's understand the terminology of this, right? There's three terms here that we need to understand. We need to understand the concept of AC, which is the actual cost. We need to understand the concept of PV. So this is not the same as the present value anymore. Uh, we're talking in terms of the value management technique. So this means something else. So PV is the planned value and EV is the earned value. So AC comes from the actual Right. How much have you actually spent? So the actual cost is what you have actually ended up spending. So as I said, we're checking at the end of week five, we're finding that we're doing one through four, and the actual cost of the, doing these four is $36,000, right? Uh, so we have spent 36,000. I'm going to pause this because somebody has shown up, so I'll, I'll resume this shortly. Okay, sorry about that. Somebody showed up in the office and completely blew away the lecture. So let's get, get back to the terminology, right? So 
So we are checking at the end of week five, we should have done four or five weeks worth of work and it should have costed us $46,000. But the actual assumed spending, you know, because we don't have a real project in front of us, um, is that we actually ended up spending $36,000 on, on this work that we have done, right? So the actual spending that we have incurred so far is $36,000, right? Now the next term is the PV, which is the planned value. So how much did we plan uh, to, to have uh, spent by the end of week five? So that's this figure right here, the 5,000 plus the eight, plus the seven, plus the 12, plus the 14. So the, the plan was that we should spend $46,000, right? So the planned value is $46,000, right? And how much value have we earned? Right? So for the work that we have done in $36,000, how much actual value have we earned for doing that work? Right? So the actual value of these four activities is 5,000 plus 7,000 plus 8,000 plus 12,000, that is $32,000. So the earned value is $32,000. Right? So again, we have done one through four, whereas we should have done five, the five added up together, come up as 46,000, so that's the planned value. The earned value is that we have done four, so add up the cost of those, we have earned in value by completing these four activities, $32,000 worth of work has been done, so that's the value that we have earned. And how much have we actually spent for earning that $32,000 worth of value? We have spent $36,000, and that's an assumed figure that we're taking up from our problem. Yeah. So now the next step is to figure out our variance. So there's two types of variances that we are concerned with. One is our cost variance, which is concerned about our cost. How much have we uh, actually, how much of a variance exists between the actual and the plan, right? So the cost variance is the earned value minus the actual cost. So the earned value is 32,000 and the actual cost is 36,000. So 32,000 minus 36,000 is negative 4,000. So there's a, there's a variance in the cost and it's a negative variance. So what does that mean for us? It means that we have actually spent $36,000, right? And we have gotten back 32,000 dollars worth of value. So the variance is negative, meaning that we have done uh, less uh, or we have, we have earned less value and we have ended up spending more. Okay, so that's uh, a negative figure is a bad figure, right? If this was a zero, then basically whatever we had planned to do and what we have actually done uh, were equivalent to each other. So we were uh, actually not behind on the money or uh, neither were we spending more than the money that we should have spent, right? So our project will have come out on, on budget, right? Now let's let's go further a little bit. Uh, we calculate something called the cost performance index. And if you notice this formula here, in the cost variance is PV minus AC. Uh, in the cost performance index is the same thing, uh, but because it's the index, so there's some sort of a numerator and some sort of a denominator. So it's the same EV, the same AC, but instead of subtracting the two figures, we're dividing by each other, right? So if we divide it, we get 32,000 divided by 36,000. So that gives us 0.889, right? So what is the same? This is saying that for every $1 that we are spending, for every $1 that is spent, we're bringing home 88, cents worth of uh, of value, right? So it's sort of like, you know, if, if uh, um, something is, is worth $10, uh, you go and you buy it, uh, you bring it home, and you find that you brought back uh, $8.89 worth of things, right? So you, you brought back home less, right? So the cost uh, or the spending that we're uh, making during this project 
is not going really well, right? Something is not right. If we're spending a dollar, we should at least be getting back one dollar's worth of uh, value, right? So in this case, our cost performance is not good. So every one dollar that we're spending, we're getting back uh, 0.889 uh, cents worth of, of value back, right? So that's not a good thing. Right? Now we can uh, figure out also the scheduled variances. How are we performing as, as far as the time of this project? So for this, we have a formula. We have the earned value minus the uh, planned value. So the earned value is 32,000 minus the planned value is 46,000. So there's a scheduled variance of, uh, and it's a negative 14,000. So let's, let's calculate the SPI, that's the scheduled performance index. So again, it's the EV uh, and it's the index. We're dividing by something, so we're dividing it by the uh, Planned value, so we are having 32,000 divided by 46,000, so we're getting 0.696. Right? So what does this mean? It means that for every one hour, right, that we spend on the project, we are wasting a, a chunk of that one hour. We are not actually performing that one hour's worth of of uh, work. We are only doing 69.6% .6 of the hour is being spent on the project. The remaining almost 30% of the hour is, is going uh, wasted, right? So in this case, we, we uh, should have some sort of a idea now developing in our mind, which is that we're spending a dollar, but we're not getting a dollar back uh, in, in value. And we're spending an hour, and we're not getting back or we're not able to perform an hour's worth of work. So clearly the indication is that this project is going to end up spending more money than the budget. And clearly there is an indication that this project is going to take longer than what we had planned for. So we need to do certain forecasts here, right? So the question then arises, what will be the cost to complete the project? So for this, we've got something called the estimated cost at completion, uh, it's abbreviated as EAC. And that is calculated by taking the original budget, which is $100,000, divided by the cost performance index, which is 0.889. So the original budget of 100,000 divided by the CPI value of 0.889 gives us the forecast that if we continue this way, and we don't change the way that we're uh, sort of running this project, this project is not going to be completing in $100,000, rather this project is going to require $112,500 to complete. So this project is going to be uh, having an overspend of $12,500 when it completes, provided nothing changes and we continue to do our business the way that we're doing uh, the project. The second question is, Will we be able to complete this project on time? So for this, we've got the estimated time to completion, which is ETC, uh, and it is the original time estimate, which was that each of the activities was one week in length, and we had 10 activities, so it was a 10 week duration project, divided by the SPI figure, which we got here, the scheduled performance index, uh, and that came out as 0.696, so 10 weeks divided by 0.696, gives us the figure of 14.4 weeks. So clearly this project is uh, slow and we're not going to be able to finish this project in, uh, in 10 weeks time, rather we're going to finish 4.4 uh, weeks late, right? So the total time that this project will uh, take for us to complete is going to be 14.4 weeks. The ETC is 14.4 weeks. So this project is uh, both behind budget um, we're going to overspend and it's also behind schedule. So we're going to uh, take more time in completing this project as well. Uh, and the last example is that uh, we have a project that at the onset um, uh, it was planned that it will cost us $1,000 uh, to complete. And we are uh, planning that it's going to finish on the 1st of November. Um, we go and check our progress on the 1st of November, and we find that only 70% of the project has been completed, 
and it has cost us $500 so far. So what are the variances? So we can quickly do this. The plan was that the project is going to cost up $1,000, right? So the plan value is $1,000. Uh, the earned value is that only 70% of the project has been completed. So 70% of this 100, uh, sorry, of this 1,000 is $700, right? And the actual cost is how much we have ended up spending by then? We have ended up spending $500, right? So this is an interesting problem because in, in projects we normally talk in this sense. Uh, we say things like the word 50% complete or 70% complete and so forth. Uh, so we don't really have the easy values. Rather, we have this, uh, this idea of approximation of how much work has been done. So in, the, in this problem, we're quantifying that percentage into some sort of monetary value, right? So we're, we took the 70% of the 1,000 and that gave us the earned value of 700,000 uh, of 700 dollars. Right. So now we can calculate the cost variances. The cost variance is the ED minus the AC, so the 700 minus the 500, so there's a cost variance of 200. Right? Uh, the cost performance index is EV over AC, so 700 divided by 500, uh, that means 1.4. So what does this mean for us? It means that we are doing uh, well, as far as the cost is concerned, we can't really calculate uh, the, the ending budget of this because we're only uh, concentrating on, on one particular activity in this example. Uh, but we, we get this clear inkling that 1.4, right? So for every dollar that we spend, we are getting back $1.4 dollars worth of value. So if, if you were to guess what will be the outcome as far as the cost, this project is going to be um, a project that will be completed in less amount of money than what you are budgeting for. Right? Now the, the schedule variance is EV minus PV. So the EV is 700 and the PV is 1000. So it's a negative 300. Right? Um, and if we calculate this PI, we get a 0.7. So for every one hour, we are only doing 70% uh, of that hour's worth of work, right? So because we don't have the complete project details in this example, uh, but from the SPI, we can interpret this project a little bit, and we can figure out from this figure that this project is going to be late, right? So what is the outcome here? Because it's a positive cost variance, and the SPI is bigger than one, this project is going better on the uh, on the budget. We're going to end up spending less money than what we had planned for this project. And the cost uh, schedule variance is negative, and the SPI is 0.7. So that gives us an, an indication that we're going to be late as far as the completion of this project is going to be concerned. Right? So these were just some examples of the time value of money and the earned value management. Uh, I hope they made some sense to you. I'll give you a sample example that you can then try out at home so you can get some practice on it. Thank you very much.